Lisa, so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here with us. So super excited, delighted to have you because you and I, we're going to talk about how you and I met. And we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of things that we touched on before we went live too. But um, you and I met because we were both invited to be a part of a summit that was industry driven for both of us. And I felt like I didn't get the opportunity. There was so many of us that was on that panelist. I didn't have the luxury and the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. And when I heard your introduction, I was like, ooh, yes, he's someone I want to interview and share his talent to everyone that is listening and watching and reading and whatever it is they're doing with this interview. So thank you for being here. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I know I want to touch on your question that you asked earlier because I thought it was great for us to um, slightly touch on it a little bit. Uh, you mentioned earlier, hey, you know, have you guys, is this your first interview? Have you just started? Yeah, I am an amateur, but <laughs> I'm not doing this for a living. I'm not doing this as a career. I'm doing this for a cause um, because of coronavirus. For those that don't know, uh, I decided. What can I do to keep my brand relevant in front of our um, contacts and our network and our prospect, but not overwhelm them with selfishness? Hire me, hire me, hire us. We can do this, we can do that, we can do this. Obviously, as a business, we have to advertise and promote ourselves. But what can we do that is more meaningful and come across as being sensitive to everything that we're all going through um, these days? So I decided to shine light on people like you, Alex. And that's why we're here is so that our network can learn a little bit more about your hidden talent, hidden because we don't know about it, and possibly come to you for their for their uh, for your services and for whatever needs they have with website. Amazing. And thank you for having me on this amazing interview. It's a great way to just provide value instead mm -hmm. of doing the follow-ups as you were saying before. Yeah. And it's a great way for you to feature people that's in your network or yeah. around your network. So Smart idea. Lots of work, though, and yes. good job so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you can see the value in that. It's not many people that see the value in that, I'm sorry to say. But every time I get someone like yourself as a guest and they see the value of all the work on the back end that goes with it, with you being in the tech industry, you get it. You know, I am doing a unique format when we do a small video um, portion and then we pair it out with q a session and voila you have a unique concept to um, our interview but it is a lot of work but the great thing about that alex is that it's keeping the momentum going for my staff it's keeping them busy it's giving them things to go while i still stay out there and hustle for us to bring new business in in spite of this corona situation so it's allowing me to prove to my team i have your back and I'm doing everything I can to keep us relevant and to keep you paid and stuff. So thank you for participating. My, my, my team thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to meet your team. <laughs> so listen, you got to tell me. All right. So here's what's fantastic about you. You customize websites for the event industry, particularly for weddings, right? Yep. So we built websites exclusively for the wedding industry. So wedding businesses like mm -hmm. caterers, venues, decorators, uh, planners, et cetera. Wow. That's beautiful. What made you target this industry particularly? Well, I'm going to take a step back and tell you a little bit of where I came from in terms of education. So uh -huh. I went to school for website design and I got my bachelor's degree in website design. And I started out just working for different agencies, like big marketing agencies. And at that time, it was about 2010, websites was a big thing, especially when it comes to SEO and yeah. development 
And there's no like Wix or Squarespace or any of that out there yet. So at that point in time, when clients come to us, I mean, they have a budget of anywhere from $50,000 to $200,000. The clients you get. (laughs) So we're working with like banks, for example, or like, um, have you heard of like Robin Sharma? Like he's a world renowned speaker and he hosts these like big events. Mm -hmm. So I actually got to work on his website and a few other like amazing people. Uh Uh, But mostly it's boring, like banks and financials and trucking companies. And so after a few years of working in those um, agencies, I decided to go back to school for event planning. So I changed careers. I literally did a 360 and went back to school uh, for event management. And I stayed in the wedding events industry for five years. I worked for a catering company. I worked for a decorating company, a venue company, an entertainment what? company, and I worked with some of the top planners in my city, in Toronto, in Canada. Wait and a I, minute. I knew there was a reason why I like you. I am, you know, I'm meeting a lot of new friends from Canada, but I've always been a big fan for Canadians. I'm sorry. I am biased people. Yes, I am. I have never met a single mean Canadian in my <laughs> life, at least not yet. <laughs> Well, if you come live here, I'll show you a few <laughs> mean Canadians around here. <laughs> there's not a lot of us, but, you know, there's some, not everybody's nice, you know? I know. So I was in the industry for about five years and about six and a half years ago, I decided to start my own business called Boutique Websites. And I merged my two passions, one for website design yeah. and one for the wedding industry. Wow. And that's why I you know, work exclusively with the wedding industry. And my skills really do benefit what I do exclusively for this industry. Because when we built websites, I mean, everybody says they build custom websites. And when they say custom websites, they buy a template or use a free template and put all your stuff in there. And that's their custom website because they're customizing the template. for. And they're throwing your colors here and there. That's your customization. (laughs) Exactly. And they could charge you upwards of $5,000. So I decided to take my skill set. I'm a certified SEO specialist. I can develop websites from scratch. And when I design, I mean, that's where it all started. It's the design. And when I was in the events industry, I would design these three-dimensional RFPs, requests for proposals for these big charity events, where you can literally fly around in 3D and look at all the decor that we've designed for for your potential event. And that's how we win a lot of events. Yeah, so that's a side story, but basically, I mean, design, development, SEO. And when we build these websites, we build your website from scratch. So any sort of animation, the wow factor is always there. And you should definitely check out some of my sample uh, work so you can kind of see the wow factor. And well, you have to share that with us so that we can put it in the Q&A section. Of course, I'll put that in. Um, and when we build these websites, we build mm-hmm. it in with SEO as part of your foundation instead of tacking it on later on. With templates, there's a lot of things that you cannot change and optimize. With a yeah. custom website, especially someone who's developing it, who's also the SEO person, we can optimize a site specifically for the keywords that you're ranking for. Wow. What's different is that when we relaunch a site, a lot of times our clients jump from maybe ranking for page four for one of their most competitive keywords to page one, just from launching, relaunching their site. Wow. Sorry, that's a little bit too long, right? (laughs) No, it's not too long. That's magnificent. Um, It's mind blowing too, because you're talking about all the work we're doing behind the scenes for these expert interview um this project of this expert interviews but just listening and i totally get it for those that are not not tech savvy and don't know much about seos and websites and all that is involved in it i get it i'm not you to narrow it down and plain words i'm not you i'm not an expert in that area but i am a business owner And I do um, experience working with 
multiple experts in that field because I've had to have my website designed several times. Now I have my inside, my in-house team that works on that. But hearing all that you do, that's a lot of work because you're not, you're not working off of a template. You know, you're really putting some true talent behind people's websites. Now, is it possible for people to utilize your services for just the SEO portion and maybe not for the website? How does that work for you? What are your services like? So that's a great question. We stopped providing SEO Mm -hmm. outside of the websites that we built for them. Because Mm -hmm. what we found is that there's a glass ceiling to what we can do in terms of optimizing a template that someone else built. And Mm -hmm. there's very like different parts of the site is actually locked because it's part of the template. We can't break it apart and recode the whole template. That would take too much time. I might as well rebuild the whole website. For That's what I was going to say. What's the point of even, you know, uh, taking on that service for that business? Because you're going to be doing double, if not triple the amount of work for a client that is only taking a portion of your services. Gracie, yeah. it sounds like you've been working with a lot of people in this field. <laughs> you know what you're talking about. Well, hold on a second. It's my job to know this stuff. I am the queen of resources. In fact, <laughs> you'll be surprised to know that in my field, even though I specialize in event management, you know, component of our industry, uh, we get a lot of clients who are startup businesses and they it's a good market for us to have them as a client. And it's also um, been coming regularly where we're seeing them needing help with their website. And their attitude is, we need you. We need to hire you and your team, but I can't afford it because I have to fix this. Because I'll point out to them that their website is, is the storefront of their business. You know, I said, imagine you walking down the street and you're walking past all these beautiful stores and you go past this one store and be like, oh, wow, you like what you see in that window. And because you like what you see in that window, what do we do next? We go inside the store and shop around to see more beautiful things. Well, that's your website. And if your website is not to par, no matter how great we are in the services that we're going to provide you, we can, we can put together a banged out event. But when it comes down to selling tickets to that event, the turnout of that event may be lower than what it should be because people are going to do their due diligence. People are going to visit your website and say, oh, let me see if I should spend $200 to go to this event for this registration. And so uh, I don't think so. And now you just lost a potential guest at your event. So that's the approach that I take with my clients or my prospects. And I'll say, that's what you don't want. What you want is you want consistency in your brand. And even though I am handling an event for you, in order for that event to be success, starting off with how many people are attending, your website's got to be at point. So, you know what? I think there's a call for collaboration here for us because (laughs) it's not that I do a lot of business with my own competition, but I'll definitely make sure I'll keep you in mind for any up and coming uh, planners and so forth and stuff like that. As long as they don't, you know, go too far past me, I need to get my my success up there first. (laughs) That sounds selfish, right? (laughs) Understandable. (laughs) But no, I would love to be able to send people your direction because, you know, my whole messaging in life um, is to point people in the right direction for the right resources and talent. And you definitely sound like you have what it takes. And normally someone at your caliber of talent, I actually pull up on the screen samples of your work. So my apologies, my apologies to you and the people that are watching for not doing that. But I definitely will take some links if you share that with us and we'll put it into the um, Q&A section. Uh, that's just remarkable. Uh, it's a shame for anyone to not 
utilize your services and, and benefit so that they can benefit off of it. Yeah. So, I mean, not that nobody's utilizing my services. <laughs> I do well, work I with mean, quite more. Right. I do work with quite a lot of people in the U.S. I would say about 50% of my clients are actually oh, yeah. from the U.S. So different parts of the U.S., obviously, some in New York, some in Colorado, Texas, all around. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, please. No, maybe I miss, uh, misspoke or anything. Meaning anyone who doesn't know you need to know you because <laughs> I'm you. sure you're getting plenty out there, plenty of uh, business out there. But it's a shame for anyone who is up and coming and doesn't know of your services to not use it because of their benefit in having your, uh, your skills and talents for their website. I'm going to be honest with you because when I started my business eight years ago, um, I had to design my website, I want to say three times before it's what it is today. And um, right now I, I'm happy with it and I love it the way it is, but it took three to four tries and mm -hmm. it was no easy journey. One of the key mistakes people make, which is what I've done, and sad thing is, is I knew better than to do this. I was trying to cut corners. There's certain things as a business owner, especially when you're starting out for the first time, there's just certain things you cannot afford to cut corners on. And one is your website. Because in the long run, I ended up paying three times as much as what I should have paid if I did it right the first time. Because this I had... Hmm? Go for it. Sorry, sorry to no. interrupt. No, no, no. Um, I was going to say because I had to, um, I had to put money out for the mistake of the first developer, and and that was an intern. You know, I wanted, I want to participate. I believe in our youth. I'm a huge advocate for young people and for women. Um, so I believe in um, supporting those categories for their uh, career development and everything like that. So I'm one of those business owners who support um, interns, but not for what is the reputation typically is in that. Mm -hmm. It's not for cheap labor, it's not for free labor, and have them make photocopies and stuff like that. I literally put them to work and I literally have equal expectations in their performance as I would if they were a W-2 status or freelancing individual for my company. So I really am looking out for their best interests of their future to give them a jump start of a bright future. But unfortunately, that very first time, I should have went to an expert. For the website because I put a lot of money out towards um, correcting the mistakes that were made or the lack of things that was done to protect the site and you know it just became a, a domino effect yeah this is a very um a common story especially within the wedding industry mm. uh, businesses they start out they might try to build it themselves and mm. then they might give up and then hire a designer who uses a template or a developer who has no design sense or someone who knows both but don't have the SEO. So once your website's built, you're nowhere to be found. Yeah. And after spending a lot of money, they finally found myself. And then we had this conversation and then they're like, wow, there's all these things that we're missing from my site. Because right. when, when I normally meet with a new uh, colleague in the industry, I go mm -hmm. through their website, I do an SEO audit, and we see where they're standing, what they might be lacking, and where right. I can help them. And so, yeah, this story is quite common. By the time they get to know me or connect with me, they probably spend over $10,000 and many, many hundreds of hours to create what they've created so far, only to redo it later on. So, I, Oh my God, I love the fact that you mentioned the number of hours because my journey and the mistakes that I made and remind you mistakes that I knew better than to do cost me tons and tons of hours where I literally lost majority of a year in business 
because I'm spending all these hours, like you said, all this time trying to undo or right the wrong that I've done the first time around. And then still it's not ready. Because remember, I went at it three times. And this is time is money and money is time. The time that you're losing to diddle daddle around the website when all you had to do was stop being cheap and just do it the right way the first time. Go ahead, <laughs> make that investment. Then you would be losing months and years out of your business yeah. and making revenue. I agree with you 100%. Let me ask you this question. Do you ever have any challenges with clients or prospects, you know, that are considering your services when you say to them, look, we need to redesign this. Like if they come to you for, for a portion of your services, SEO only, and you say to them, you break their heart by saying, no, we're either going to design it all or not at all. Uh, because one, a person would probably look at that as you trying to trap them into something that they're not interested in doing, especially if they don't understand to the level that someone like me do what you're offering them. No, that's a great question. Um, so I'm very thorough and I like to explain like complicated, complex uh, methods and websites and technology in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do go through quite a lot of conversations mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, I mean, what I have here is the best route potentially for them. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then I will explain to them that these are, this is probably the best route. Don't work with me. Uh, it really depends on their situation, right? But at the end of the day, it's all about communication. And I think yeah. that, you know, I have my services to offer and there's always a choice. And as long as you're still interested, I will follow up. <laughs> so I would never forget someone who would say, I'm interested, but, you know, follow up in two weeks. And for sure, guarantee it's in my calendar to follow up in two weeks. So I think communication and, you know, just being in communication is really important when it comes to uh, these conversations. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And what's great about that just came to mind for me is you have certainly the credentials to back up your capability of building the idea site for them and their brand, or maybe even creating that brand for them, you know, because sometimes we have it here. Again, it took me eight years for that, that brand that I had in my head for my company to actually be visible. Um, I felt like every single website was not communicating what I envisioned for, for the company. But you also really do get and understand what people are looking for in the industry because you work with so many great renowned designers in the industry, some heavy hitters out there, basically globally uh, or international, if you will. And you know what attracts people to, to being a customer or a client of, of an individual and stuff. That was another challenge that I came across over the course of the years too, was someone completely understanding my industry and giving it the luxury and the feel that I wanted it to do because I didn't want it to gravitate too much to weddings because we focus on corporate and business clients. I also did not want it to be too foo-foo and girlish because some of those clients may be men. You know, we do weddings but we just don't focus on it. So having someone like yourself, and that was, the, that was the aha moment that I had when I met you the first time. I was like, there's not many, I know of another one, but there's not many website developers out there that specifically focuses on the wedding industry. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that, that is rare, even if you go to an agency. So mm -hmm. if you imagine the, the journey of working with an agency, you have the account manager who you're dealing with mm -hmm. after the salesperson have sold you the site. So after you put down a deposit, you got an account manager. Oh, I'm not dealing with your site. You're dealing with this account manager. 
yes. who probably doesn't even know your name until she saw your document or your invoice. <laughs> right. And then this account manager will take what your vision is based on what you told her uh -huh. and communicate this to a designer who's never met you before ever. And another developer who's trying to create what the designer wanted to be created visually. So there's a lot of maybe miscommunication. And then there's an SEO person who doesn't understand the industry, who doesn't know what keywords to optimize for. So you yeah. can imagine all the miscommunications in between because of all these people working together to create your site. And then yeah. at the end, you can imagine how expensive this is because yeah. now you got to pay for the rent to hold all these people, the account manager, the owner, the salesperson, the designer, the SEO person, the developer, or a team of developers in, oh. in the agencies that I worked at. So that's why it costs about, you know, 50 to 100, $200,000 to hire someone who can build a website strongly from the foundation up with all the skill sets needed to build a site. But I think even in that situation, as you said, Gracie, is that they don't understand our industry. So mm -hmm. now they got to spend even more time if they wanted to, to understand the industry and charge you for it. Or if they That's what I was going to say. They charge you for it too. <laughs> Go Everything ahead. is done on a time, like they track all of their time, right? That's right. So the alternative is someone that's actually been through a teardown in the middle of a night or a yeah. setup before an event or someone who's worked for a planner who's sold venues and decor and really understand the vision that you are trying to sell because... Right. I mean, I was in your position as a salesperson for your service. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. No, that's question? beautiful. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Kind of. <laughs> that is beautiful. This is what people need to hear. Thank you. That kind of wraps up our time, but I cannot let you leave without our fun fact question. Well, today we're doing this interview, fastly approaching the holidays. And hopefully, you know, with timing and everything um, playing in our favor, we will be able to produce this right in the midst of the holiday season. So my fun fact question for you is what's your favorite holiday and why? <laughs> so, I mean, we're in the midst of a coronavirus. There's not much we can do during these holidays in 2020. Uh, hopefully 2021 is different, but my favorite holiday is and always will be Christmas. Mm -hmm. I mean, December is a date where, I mean, my birthday is, my parents, both my parents' birthdays are, and a lot of my Sagittarius friends' birthdays are. So we end up celebrating at least like twice or three times a week. Like we just go out and celebrate almost like we're taking turns having our birthdays. Yeah. And then the big Christmas event, we would just have this big celebration together. So I, I find that it's very festive. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of, I guess, partying. <laughs> for, for I people. love it. So wait a minute, you piqued my interest. When is your birthday? My birthday is right in the beginning, December 2nd. Oh, okay. It's so the early part of December because I'm January. I'm right okay. after Christmas. <laughs> That's wow. Awesome. Wow. That's remarkable. Yes. So I am super excited. Listen, Alex, I would love to have you come back. We can always touch on so many other topics that would be beneficial to our fellow colleagues and entrepreneurs and experts in the field and so on and so on. Um, but until then, I bid you good care and good health for the rest of 2020. Well, thank you for that. And health is a big thing. And I bid you and all your viewers and audience, good health, uh, be prosperous, hopefully in this situation. And I look forward to coming back. Thank you oh, so much, Gracie. Awesome. Thank you. Take care.